Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Julian Jari. I'm a filmmaker living not too far outside of New York City, and this video is a long time coming. Today, I'm gonna to share with you my entire cinema camera rig breakdown. What's so great about this build is you don't have to do it exactly like this. You can pick and choose which items you like for your uses and create your own custom camera build. All these parts are super generic and don't only have to work with the Sony FS7. You could build this thing around a RED, a C200, an EVA1. Just to keep things smooth and fast moving, I'm not gonna refer to any of these parts by their name or their brand. All the links are gonna be in the description below and you'll be able to get to all that stuff there. Over the last few years, I've been perfecting this cinema camera build and I love it. I love the weight, I love the handling, I love everything about it. I love that I can throw it on the tripod when I have to. I love it that it's heavy and it feels great on an easy rig. I love it that I can just put it straight on the floor and I don't have to worry about it. I love it that I can throw it in the back of a car and not have to worry about it. I can put it on a seat with a seatbelt and I don't have to worry about it. Every single part and piece is rock solid and does the job. I got audio, I got a lens, I got a monitor, I got everything and it's just a workhorse. My cinema camera home base is the tripod even though it goes on the floor or in the back of the car for transport or works all day off an easy rig it has to be able to clip quickly and easily right onto a tripod and what I do for that is I use a VCT plate so a quick release VCT plate where I have my tripod plate uh, screwed to the bottom of that and that plate just clips right into the tripod You'll find out how we connect to that later. So at the heart of everything here, I've got my trusty FS7 with what I call a standard Manfrotto plate here at the bottom, which quick release slides right into this uh, shoulder pad. I'll tighten that down. It's gonna allow me to plug into the VCT plate later and obviously put it on my shoulder when I want to. Next, uh, what's a cinema camera build without a top cheese plate? This is gonna allow me to add all my components later. Give me all those mounting points. So we'll screw this guy on here. It was a couple years ago now where I transitioned from normal batteries to V-mount batteries, but V-mount batteries allow me to uh, run everything off of them. So I have my monitor, I have a wireless transmitter, um, I, I phantom power a microphone, a V-mount uh, gives me a lot of energy with D-taps out and I don't have to worry about power. So uh, the next thing I'll do is I'm gonna add this V-mount adapter for this FS7. Um, but like I said earlier, uh, none of these are specific. So if you have a C200 or an EVA1, there's all sorts of um, V-mount adapters for your camera. Something else it does is it adds weight to the back of the camera which not only helps for use on an easy rig, uh, which helps have it, having more weight, gives you a more stable camera, but it adds some weight in the back. So if you are gonna do uh, some shoulder work, it puts that weight in the back to counterbalance your lens. What should we do next? Uh, let's do the top handle next. So I've got a NATO rail, which is basically just kind of a quick release rail. And that allows a NATO handle, which is a quick release handle to get slid right on here. And in my case, I have an easy rig uh, quick release ball on there. Let's add some rails and a lens. I personally would recommend getting a handful of different uh, rail sizes. I think right here, if I can guess sizes here, I've got some six inches, I've got some 10 inch rails. I'm gonna put the 10 inch rails on again, Rails aren't too expensive, and I would recommend uh, just grabbing just grabbing a couple, just so you have them in your arsenal. So we're gonna add these rails right to the front of this VCT plate. We'll add this lens. And we know the Sony E-mount, in my case, isn't the strongest thing in the world, and the Sigma 50 to 100 is a a beast, so we'll add this long lens support. Just like that. All right, let's talk arms for a second. Over the years, I've really um, held out, didn't really want to spend a lot of money on an arm. But unfortunately, I kept breaking these arms that I, that I advocated for so many times. 
And I finally got to a point where it was like, if I'm gonna buy two, three, four, five, six of these things and break them, that actually costs as much as one of these. So I might as well just get this thing and never break it. So that's what I did. This arm is everything for me, honestly. Um, indirectly, it's everything for me because the seven inch monitor is everything for me. That's, that's you know, my monitor. And uh, I need a strong, big arm to be able to put that monitor safely where I want it to be. Next, we're gonna put the monitor on. I have equipped the end of this uh, magic arm with a NATO clamp, and then I've equipped my monitor with a NATO rail. So actually, I can just slide this thing in here and tighten it right up like that. So now I've got my monitor. I can kind of move it in place where I'd want it, like that. I'm going to uh, throw my V-mount battery on. I'm gonna do a dummy battery uh, from DTAP. So I'm gonna go DTAP out of, the, out of this V-mount battery, and I'm gonna go power to this monitor. But before I do this, I'm gonna use what's called a DTAP splitter, and I've Velcroed it here. This allows me to not just have one accessory, but in this case, up to four here, and then a couple more on the battery. Then we're gonna take our dummy battery and plug this guy in here kind of neatly run it down the camera and into the DTAP splitter. Then in my case, I'm gonna take an SDI cable into the monitor. I like taking these little red bungees and um, doing a little bit of cable management here. So I'll come in here and kind of give this one of those. So what's so great about cinema cameras is that most of them have XLR inputs with phantom power and good preamps, and they really support a really good audio setup. And this camera here is no, no exception. This audio side of the camera is um, now where we really get into this nitty gritty. I know I've got a lot of people over the year asked me about what I do on this side of the camera. So in order to plug in a lav pack or two, I've wanted to create this kind of set of hot shoes on this end of the camera. I create this little setup here with um, a cold shoe, the screws that come with it, a quarter 20 to quarter 20 adapter, and then one of these little quarter 20 spacers that come with kind of hot shoe accessories. And what happens is we get something that looks like this. So I will screw this guy in here. And I've already lined this one up to be all good. And we can make this one. So, so we're gonna put this, this cold shoe here. Set this guy up here. So I've got one pack in, so I've got this spacing right. And then I can see that we're gonna put this one here. It's nice to have a couple tools here, a couple of different pliers, because you're gonna wanna line these up vertically. So what I'll do is I'll take this guy I'll tighten that and then I'll take this cold shoe and line it up horizontally like that. Boom. And then we can slide the double lav pack set up in. Okay, that's that. You'll eventually have the cables that go out into XLR. And we're almost done here. I like setting up my, my stock finder as a director's monitor off to the side. So what I've got is this random uh, rail support here. Just place that there. And you could have your viewfinder put wherever you want. I know a lot of folks that like it up here, kind of right under their monitor, but I've found that I don't even need it. So I just put it here for a director or an AC to kind of give it a look every once in a while. And actually it's nice too, um, if I happen to be on the other side of the camera uh, interviewing somebody or something, um, I can actually look at it as well. We're gonna throw this dog bone on here that can allow for any sort of grips, the Ari Rosette style grips. I've got these awesome wood spheres that don't give you any um, tangible control as far as grip is concerned. Uh, the FS7 has a grip that you can pull out here um, that I've done, 
but I feel really good with these that I can just hold them. It's also really awesome that you can just put them on the ground once they're mounted. We'll end up doing that. These are the, the nucleus handles where uh, we've got powered follow focus here. So you could also just throw these handles on. So now we basically got this entire camera built. So let me show you what this VCT plate's all about. Just slides right in. Let's throw this map box on here. So there is our map box. And I believe, if I am not mistaken, that is the entire cinema camera rig breakdown. So that's it, that's the rig breakdown. I can be here on my sticks, looking at my monitor, and in the blink of an eye, I can flick the monitor down, kind of get it out in front of my face as to where I need it. I can pop it off the VCT plate, and I can throw it on my shoulder, just like that. I really hope you guys enjoyed this rig breakdown, and I'll see you in the next one.